Oh, hello YouTube. Today I'm the Natty Librarian. We're doing another episode of Drunk Classics. Today we are doing The Picture of Jorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I figured, you know what? Ever since Sense and Sensibility, which is just filled with fuckboys, I decided, you know what? Let's just keep that theme going. <laughs> Mainly because I feel like Dorian Gray is going to be just awful. <laughs> Not the book, the character. I think he's just going to be a terrible human. But I do want to read it because I do like Oscar Wilde quite a bit. So I'm preparing. <laughs> Also today, I am drinking this lovely Montepulciano di Abruzzo. It is a Sangiovese from like the Tuscany region of Italy. I really like this one in particular. It's very punchy. It's very good. Um, it's definitely a drink in wine though, because I can drink too much of this very easily and that's kind of the point. <laughs> anyway, I am going to start digging into this and see what happens. Oh, hello. I figured I would stop and check in. This is my second glass. And um, I haven't read a ton yet, but I have some theories about what is going on here. Okay, so first of all, this book is way more gay than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> so we, we've met these three dudes so far. There's Basil, he's a painter. Then you have Lord Henry, and then you have Dorian Gray. And Basil is like, straight up in love with Dorian and Dorian's is kind of this pretty thing you know hasn't lived enough yet to be smart enough to think about things he's kind of just prey for the taking pretty and not a lot of brains yet and Basil's in love with him and then Lord Henry is just kind of like the party guy and he's like oh hey Dorian and Basil's like please don't flirt with him like I fucking like him and like Lord Henry's like I don't promise anything <laughs> So Lord Henry's like, hey, let's go to the theater, Dorian. And he's like, yes, he's like obsessed with Lord Henry. So Dorian likes Henry and Henry is just kind of blase about everything, doesn't really care. And then Basil's in love with him. So already we have a love triangle. I don't know if this is actually going to come into play, but right now the book is kind of giving me like Faustian vibes like I'm wondering I'm like is Lord Henry the devil like is he the devil is he because he's very much like oh let me tempt you into sin my young pretty man like he's just like such a party boy but like specifically tempting people on purpose so I'm like are you the devil are you gonna make a bargain with Dorian about his painting because so far it's just a painting like they haven't got any magical painting abilities or painting stuff happening yet <laughs> it's just a love story well no it's a love triangle and then i don't i don't i don't know i just i think henry's the devil he might be in disguise i don't know so i'm like about 25 percent of the way through the book i'm like a quarter through this book and here's the deal i had a pause for just a hot second because like as much as i like the general queerness of this story. Um, there's also like alarming anti-Semitism. <laughs> oh, like they weren't even trying to be subtle about it. They're like, oh, oh, okay. In this time period, perhaps that was just how people talked. It still wasn't right in that time period, but people just talk that way. I don't know. This whole book, this is the picture of Dorian Gray. I'm like, is this fucking Dracula where the whole book isn't about Dracula? Because like so much of this book isn't about Dorian Gray so far. Dorian Gray is a part of it. He's like a muse and he, we haven't had any of the book from his point of view yet. It's just all Lord Henry. And I'm like, are we just reading a book about Lord Henry? Is this about him? I don't, I don't know. And you know what? I, the thing I forgot about this wine is that it has a higher alcohol content than I was expecting. I, I expected it on the inside, but my brain didn't, I never remember before I start drinking. So this is the end of glass two and I'm, I'm a little loosey goosey. <laughs> so um, I'll probably have one more glass and then I feel like I should stop before I'm a sloppy mess. Okay, so Dorian Gray, 
he's just pretty and stupid. Like, the whole book is about him, but it's like not about him. He's more of like a concept, even though he's a person. And then um, he meets this actress, Sybil. He's like obsessed with this lady. He's like, she's the best. I'm in love with her. We're getting married. I'm assuming Dorian Gray is probably very young. We mentioned him being young before, but I'm thinking he's younger than I thought he was. By young, I thought he meant like early 20s. And I'm like, he's probably 19 max. Like he's a baby probably. And so he meets this, this actress, Sybil, and he's like obsessed with her. And he's like, we're getting married. And she's like so obsessed with him too. She's like 16. So, you know, they're young and in love. Good for them. Wait, is she 16? No, her brother is 16. She's probably older than him, maybe 18 or something. But anyway, her brother is 16 and he's gonna go to Australia. He's like, I'm gonna get on a ship and I'm getting paid to do it. I'm making money, la la la. And her brother's like, who's this fucking guy that you've been talking to? And she's like, oh, I call him Prince Charming. And she's like, and then the brother, 16, a lot of common sense. He's just like, okay, so you don't know his name, right? <laughs> This brother is just, I like him the best. He's the best character in this book and he's barely in it. But like, I like him the best. He's like the only like moral center of the book where he's just like, oh my gosh, you don't know his name and you're in love with him just because he looks like a fancy pants. What the fuck? <laughs> and he's just like, listen, Sybil, if this guy fucks you over, I will get on a boat from Australia. I will come here. I will get off the boat and I will kick his ass six ways to Sunday. You got it. Like, <laughs> I love her brother. I don't even remember his name. He's just brother, whatever. Sybil's brother. And he's just like, this guy's, I don't trust him. I'm gonna beat the shit out of him if he hurts you. Like, fingers crossed he's rich and you're gonna have a great life. But if not, most likely if not, like, I'm gonna murder this motherfucker. <laughs> That's where we are. We finally got a chapter from someone else's perspective. It's funny, like, none of the chapters are from Dorian's perspective so far. And I'm like, at least, I don't know, I'm getting close to halfway <laughs> through the book and none of the chapters are from Dorian's perspective. They're all from other people. And like, maybe I thought this book was something completely different than what it is because like I've, I've never read it before, obviously. I've only like known the pop culture references of it. So like, I thought this was gonna have like a magical element, like a deal with the devil, and then like the portrait ages. I know that's like the thing, but so far none of that has happened. And it's just like this guy who's young and pretty and stupid, and like these other dudes are kind of like using him as a plaything, and also, there's he's using another person as a plaything. They're all just playthings. I don't know. They're all just dandies playing with each other. I am pausing because I just had a gasp moment of this book. Oh my word. Okay, so, so Dorian. Remember how he's like in love with Sybil, this actress? So he he brings Basil and Henry to the theater. He's like bros you gotta see this girl like she's great i'm obsessed with her and then henry's there and he's like oh well right because he's just being sassy because that's who he is as a character and they get there and the thing is like sybil has a bad night she is not performing well and then dorian is just mortified he's like oh no my friends all saw you suck so he goes backstage and Sybil's like, oh, it's because like I'm in love with you. I realized how false all these words I was saying were. And he's just like, ew, like you were bad and I don't want to see you anymore. Okay, bye. And he leaves like an asshole. And I was like, wow. I had a gasp because wow. <laughs> so like, remember how I mentioned the anti-Semitism in this book? that's like not even being vague, it's just very blatant. Um, there's also just like blatant misogyny in this book. Like women are just like detestable creatures and like not have any personality besides the basis. And like even Henry has this whole thing where he waxes poetic about women. Like that's all Henry does. He just waxes poetic 
about fucking everything because he's just insufferable. <laughs> like, he's the kind of guy you meet and you're like, wow, he really knows a lot of shit. And then you listen to him for long enough and you're like, wow, no, you don't know a lot of shit. You're just full of shit. So that's Henry. And like most of the stories from Henry's perspective and he's a piece of shit. And then Dorian is trying to like mirror his life off Henry because that's like his idol. Slash, I think he's in love with him. Here's the thing. I thought this was going to have like a more magical element to it, like Faust. But like it doesn't. Dorian Gray is just like, I don't know, maybe he's lost his mind and he's just like, this painting will take on all of my sins and I'll just be great and young. Like he's just like willed this into existence. There's no like deal with the devil or anything. He just like, this is what he's decided. By the way. Remember that actress I was talking about, Sybil? Like, after he's just like, ew, you're a bad actress. I don't like you anymore. She full-on killed herself. And, like, for a moment, Doreen was, like, felt really guilty before he knew that she killed herself. He was, like, writing there this long letter. He's like, I'm sorry. I was a dick. And then Henry shows up. Fucking Henry. He is, like, the root of all evil. And he shows up. He's like, oh, bitch. Like, she's dead. Like, did you not hear? She's super dead. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah. Like, she's dead due to love of you. Isn't it artistic? And Dorian Gray's like, yeah. You know what it is. Like, Henry is the worst thing that ever happened to Dorian Gray. Dorian on his own has a conscience and like thinks and like doesn't want to be a bad person but then Henry shows up and he's just like why don't you be a bad person isn't it fun and he's just like you know what yeah it is and then like he starts being an asshole anyway I thought there was gonna be like a magical deal with the devil involved and there isn't yet it's just kind of like Dorian just deciding like I don't know if it's like a, like a telltale heart situation where he's just like really sad. Like he comes home after he tells like Sybil, ew, I don't like you anymore. And he looks at the portrait that Basil drew, well painted. And he's just like, oh, like this painting looks, has like an evil look on its face. Oh no. And then it makes him like regret his decisions. And so I don't know if he's just like, I don't know. Um, um, putting his own feelings on this portrait because he knows like right from wrong and he's like assigning all these attributes to the painting instead of himself because he's a child. <laughs> I don't I don't know if this is all a big metaphor or not because like I know the story here and it's supposed to have a metaphysical thing but like there's nothing like magical happening yet. I thought there was going to be some magical thing and there's not. But my big takeaways is that Oh boy, this is a lot gayer than I thought it was gonna be and I love it. Also, where is the magic? I thought there was gonna be a lot more magic. And also, Dorian Gray is a little baby who doesn't have a POV at all. He's just like a thing in the story. I've drank a lot of wine. Like, let's look at this bottle, guys. Like, like a lot of it's in my body right now. <laughs> And um, I'm gonna stop for today because I feel like if I drink anymore, I'm gonna just be sloppy. So here's the plan. I'm gonna trick my boyfriend into getting me Taco Bell because every time I'm drunk, I just want Taco Bell. And I'm gonna finish this tomorrow because I feel like I need a break. Oh, hello YouTube. <laughs> it is a new day and I am continuing on reading the picture of Dorian Gray. I am not in my couch nook at the moment. I am in bed because it's 100 degrees out and my living room is very warm, but the bedroom is nice and cool. Also, like, let's just, let's just like get this out of the way. I do know none of my sheets match. <laughs> I, I don't care. Like, I know they should match and I don't care. I'm just a full chaos person. Also, this blue thing behind me, yes, I know it is a bed sheet I'm using for a curtain, but mind you, it's because the curtains behind me were too light and I was getting this weird hot spot, so I had to put something up you know, we're all on this journey together. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to be finishing Dorian Gray today. I've read the first half so far. I need to get into the second half. I believe I left off. Uh, Dorian just decided like, hey, I like being evil. I think that's where we left it off. 
And today I am going to be drinking this wine. This is an appassionamento from Bonari. We're here to get drunk and read Dorian Gray. So I'm gonna start doing that and I will check in when I feel it's time to check in. I haven't read like a too much more, maybe like 30 pages more, but uh, this has been 30 pages that's felt like a hundred pages. I know there's like this big artistic metaphor here, but it's like, did we need 30 pages to get to the point? <laughs> so um, Dorian, he's just like, notices his painting is cruel now. I don't know how much of it, I, I'm assuming it's real that like the painting's taking on his sin. And then Ju and then um, Dorian is just like, oh, I'm so perfect. And then like his brain has become so fucking warped at this point. He sees everything through a lens of art and he goes on and on for 30 pages just describing paintings and I get it it's supposed to show like the downfall of his mind and how he sees his own evilness as a way to view beauty and art also fun fact I thought Dorian couldn't look at his portrait or like it would revert and he keeps looking at his portrait like, he has looked at it several times. Like, now he's had it, like, locked up in a room with, like, a cloth over it. So no one can see it. But, like, he sees it every once in a while, and it doesn't, like, reverse the damage. So is it is it, like, if someone else sees it? Like, if someone else sees, like, the real him, like, his, like, damaged sinful side, like, it'll revert? I don't know, because he's looked at it, like, a bunch. All right, so that was just a quick check-in. But, yeah, I had, I felt like it was necessary to say something about 30 pages of just painting, so... I don't know. I'm going to keep going. Well, this took a turn. Um, <laughs> um, I'm also drinking my second glass. And um, so you remember when I was complaining about how boring it was? He was just talking about paintings. Well, now it's murder. There has been murder. So Basil, the guy who painted the portrait of Julian, the, he's so nice. Fucking Basil. Like, he just wants what's best for Dorian. He's like in love with him. Dorian knows he's in love with him. And then he comes by and he's like, Dorian, like, what the fuck? Like, everyone's saying this evil shit about you all the time. Like, bro, are you okay? Like, he's like really concerned about him. And he's just like, wow, you look great too. Cause like Dorian's not aging. And he's just like, come on, you're like, you can't be this awful person. Like, I know you. And he's like, oh, do you? Would you like to see my soul? <laughs> so he takes him upstairs. And they go in the room where he keeps the portrait. And they both look at the portrait. Everyone's looking at this portrait and it doesn't revert. So I don't know what's going to make it turn back. But like Dorian looks at it and Basil looks at it. They're both looking at this thing. And they're like, oh, fuck. This painting's fucked up because it's all like evil and he's older. And he's just like, it's this evilness is all festered in this painting. But everybody's looking at it. It's not a big deal, apparently. That doesn't re like reverse the damage. I don't know why... That's what, like, the main thing everyone, quote, knows about the book is like, oh, if he looks at his portrait again, it'll reverse. But, like, nah, he looks at this shit all the time. But anyway, so, Basil's like, Dorian, like, like, you could fix this. Like, you, you, you obviously made the, a deal with the devil here. Maybe you could pray your way out of it. Like, I'm here. I'm your friend. I'm gonna help you. And Dorian is like, thinking like, wow, Basil's a really good person. I can't fucking stand it. And he just like stabs the shit out of Basil. So much. Like, not just like one stab, like so many stabs. Like Basil is super dead. Like just stabbed in the neck like eight times. He just like murders the shit out of Basil. And I'm like, oh my good, this took a turn. <laughs> there was just like, you know, general sin and debauchery and just like general wickedness. And now it's just like, Murder, and the the body's in there, just bleeding everywhere. And he's like, "Oh well, now we have a body." Uh, <laughs> so he goes downstairs, and he's just like, "Well, no one knows he was here. Like, I could probably get away with this." So he like he puts on his coat again, and he 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 goes outside the house because all of his servants are asleep. And he opens the door again and like rings for his servants to wake them all up. And in the, you know, the valet comes out. He's like, oh, sir, it's very late. He's like, oh, what time is it? And he's like, it's half past two. And he's like, half past two. Oh, my word, how late. 
did anyone call for me tonight? And he's like, oh, uh, Basil was here around 11 o'clock, but he left because he had to catch a train. And he's like, oh, how unfortunate that I must have missed him. Because <laughs> apparently no one saw him come into the house with Basil originally. So like, he's just gonna get away with it. Like, I don't know what he's gonna do with the body. Like he has a body like in his house. He has to get rid of it because like, it's gonna, it's gonna decompose. Like he has to get rid of this body. I don't know how he's gonna do it, but like he's in a pickle now and he doesn't feel bad that he killed his friend, like the only good friend he has. He's just like, ah, oh, fuck, I got a body now. <laughs> oh my, this took a turn. <laughs> and you know what? I, I remember saying, I think Henry's the devil. And I'm gonna like go back to that because Henry has been the downfall of everything in Julian's life everything like henry was the first one who says like oh well you're really hot you know you should like do stuff about that and then he's like oh and he just keeps whispering in dorian's ear and he gives him this book i forgot to talk about the book it's henry he gives dorian this book and dorian can't stop reading it and it's like just like festers in his brain and it makes him crazy and he's like no i i find beauty and wickedness and blah 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 so like that's where we are but yeah he just super murdered basil and i was like oh basil you're such a good friend maybe, maybe you'll get through to Dorian and I'm like oh no <laughs> anyway let's get back to the murder book <laughs> well things just got weirder um mm. okay so <laughs> so Dorian murdered Basil and then he's just like oh fuck I got a body I don't know what to do with it I got it I'll call my ex-boyfriend so so he calls up his ex-boyfriend, Campbell, who is like a doctor. And Campbell fucking hates him now. Because Dorian, you know? Like, he's, he probably ruined Campbell. Like, just, like, messed him up emotionally. And Campbell still comes over because he sends him his letters. Like, it's life and death, I need you. And he's just like, what the fuck, bro? Like, why would I ever help you? You suck. And he's just like, listen, I got a body upstairs. You need to, like, science it away. <laughs> And so Campbell's like, you can go fuck yourself. I don't care you got a body up there. And he's like, oh, well, I didn't want to have to do this, Campbell. And he, like, shows him this letter. And apparently he's like, yes, and I'll have to send it out if you don't. I'm assuming it's a letter that's, like, describing their affair and, like, telling everyone he's gay or something. That's what I'm assuming from the subtext of the book. And, and... Uh, and so Campbell's like, you son of a bitch. And so they send out the valet to get a bunch of chemicals, like full on Breaking Bad style. And they're like, okay, I'm going to go dissolve the body upstairs in your house. So Campbell does it. It takes like five hours, but he gets rid of the body through science. And Dorian's like, oh, well, that's tidy. He's just horrible. He started out like not so horrible, but he's just been so full, fully corrupted. And poor Campbell. He's just like, I'm a fucking doctor, and you just, like, ruined life for me now. <laughs> Still, that's pretty ballsy, like, calling up your ex-boyfriend to, like, science away a body for you. Mind you, you did not break up on good terms. <laughs> so, the sheer audacity of it. Okay, let's, let's pause for a minute again. So, this is glass three? Probably. In the first half of the book, there was this woman. Her name was Sybil Vane. And Dorian was like, I'm in love with her. I'm going to marry her. She's this actress. And then she performed badly one night. And he's like, I don't like you anymore. Blah. And she killed herself. And her brother was a sailor. And he's just like stewing with anger. It's been like 18 years since this happened. And so Dorian goes to this opium den and he finds this guy that, another guy that he fucked over and it's like, oh, this is unfortunate. I guess he, that now he's just trying to be self-aware and he's just like, is it my fault that I fucked him over and now he's an opium addict? Huh, that's strange. And he's just walking down the street. James Vane, Sybil Vane's brother, is like, I'm gonna fucking kill you! <laughs> like, he's so angry. And he's just like, what are you talking about? And he's just like, my sister was Sybil Vane, and you killed her. And he's like, I didn't kill her. He, and he's like, hey, wait, 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 how long ago did this happen? And he's like, 18 years. He's like, go look at my face under the light. So James yanks him under the light. And mind you, he still looks like he's 20, because he's never aged since the portrait was drawn when he was 20. He's 38 now, but he looks 20. So he's just like, oh, fuck, I, you, you are obviously not old enough to have killed my sister. So he's all, like, really, like, shaken up over it and then Dorian's like all right well you know 
You think about what you did. <laughs> and he leaves. So now James Vane is back in the picture. And there's this lady who was at the opium den. And she comes to James. She's like, why didn't you kill him? He's like, because he's like 20. He obviously didn't kill my sister. And she's like, oh no, like he totally killed your sister. He hasn't aged a day. There's something fucked up about him. And he killed your sister. And she's like, what? And he turns and looks for Dorian. And he's not there. And he turns the other way. And that lady's gone. So he's just full of ghosts. So he's been following... Darian around and he's at his estate and they're like him and his little foppish friends are out like shooting one day and they're gonna shoot this rabbit and Dorian's like no don't shoot the rabbit I like it and the guy shoots anyway and then this guy gets shot this guy who was just like in the field and they're and everyone's just like why would he walk in front of a bullet how dare he like <laughs> and they all grab their monocles and just like bah, 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 bah. oh that's a bunch of rich people not caring that they just killed a guy they, basically it's just more of like an awkward situation rather than like oh no an innocent person got killed turns out james fain so there's just no justice in the world here <laughs> so Dorian finally finds out that it was James and he's just like, whoo, <laughs> he's real happy now because he had for like days been like horrified that James was going to kill him. And that's why he was so relieved because he's like, oh no, oh no, James is coming for me. I know it. He's like, there was a, actually one really good line in the book where he's just like, he's scared of dying, but he's like, doesn't give a shit about life either. So he's just in this weird ennui of purgatory of his own life and Dorian is kind of falling apart now at the seams like he's still very much under um Henry's spell but um just kind of falling apart like he he doesn't have any zest for life even though he has to live it I don't know it's kind of getting good now and being like interesting in his character development although i only have like 10 pages left of the book <laughs> so I'll, I'll check in one more time when i'm done with it but yeah so it's getting interesting i don't know how this is gonna shake out but we'll f we're gonna find out in 10 pages i have finished the book <laughs> so so dorian he's like feeling real sorry for himself and then henry's still there just being like weird i don't know if he's the devil he might just be an asshole like i don't know dorian he's just feeling real bad and he's just like oh like i've lived this horribly wicked life and then he wants to feel bad about it but he can't because now he can't feel anything at all so it's kind of like a tragedy but for a character you don't really feel all that bad for because he's a horrible person but anyway so Dorian he's just like he's all like high on himself he's like Henry guess what there was this girl I could have totally totally slept with like I was seducing the shit out of her and then I decided you know what I'm not gonna ruin her look at me doing a good deed he's real proud of himself and henry's just like oh, oh, oh you didn't fuck her Ugh. like he just makes fun of him for it and like again he's just poisoning dorian and dorian goes home and he's just like did i do a good deed or was i just like bored and that was something to entertain myself with like something that's a good deed and he kind of realizes that's it he's just like oh no I'm just a horrible horrible person I didn't do a good deed because it's a good thing to do I did it because I'm fucking bored so he's just like I hate this painting ah, he's staring at the paintings all decrepit and covered in blood because he's a murderer and he's just like die painting and he stabs the painting and then apparently that goes back to himself and he dies like the servants all hear like a horrible scream and they're like oh no oh no and they go in the room and they find him on the floor with like a knife in his heart and then the paintings on the wall and it's like a beautiful painting of him and his youth how they knew their like master to look and the guy on the floor is just fucked up looking he is decrepit and they're like who is this dead guy and then eventually they find out who it is because he's wearing all of dorian's rings that's the only way they identify the body but anyway so dorian's dead now because <laughs> he stabbed his own portrait so it's kind of like a tragedy does he learn a lesson really eh. Kind of, but not really. He's just kind of like, well, I'm bored with everything. I might as well just go die now. <laughs> like, that's kind of the big ending. And Henry's still, like, being just like an asshole. But yeah, so the picture of Dorian Gray. Um, it's way gayer than I thought. 
more murder than I thought. And also very different. Because I thought, like, he couldn't look at the picture. But apparently he can look at this picture all he likes. And, yeah. So I read the whole thing. Ooh. Yeah, I liked it. It got better definitely in the second half. The first half was, like, a lot of just preamble. But the second half got really twisty, turny, dark. And they never really explain what the magic is. It's just, like, because, like, Basil loved him so much. He put so much of his soul into this painting that, like, it it just somehow became Dorian's soul. Like, they don't really, like, explain the magic of that and how that works ever. It's just, like, it's just what happened. <laughs> but anyway, um, let me know in the comments. Um, have you read The Picture of Dorian Gray? If so, what do you think about it? If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And come back next month. There'll be another Drunk Classics. I have fun making these. Yeah. That's all I got. Okay, so bye.